is about whether the current crisis in Russia is externally or internally generated. And the answer could be that of course it's both, although it was triggered by external sanctions and a very bad atmosphere in the world oil markets, low oil price, it became a catalyst for a, a series of Russian internal problems in its economy, in its financial system and its banking to collapse together in one systemic effect. And unfortunately, it crisis didn't really start in 2014. It had earlier roots. Russia had been in economic stagnation since 2012, at least, with very slow growth, with already reduced super revenues from oil, and also with reduced capacity to redistribute this, uh, these revenues inside the country. So the slowdown in the economy took place already then. But what happened in 2014 was that the financial isolation of Russian banks and financial institutions from the capital markets in the world really translated a financial crisis into a credit crisis and, and a banking collapses. Whereas, of course, oil pressures, the collapsing oil price, has reduced the revenues to the federal budget and also the revenues that are being redistributed to the regions and the industries who have relied on those incomes since 2002. The second question is really the paradox. Why, although Russia is not a classic petrostate, why so many things in Russia are dependent on the level of oil prices in the world? Political stability, socio-economic atmosphere, the everyday life of people, even the mood. And the answer is complex, but I would say that it is to do with the system of management, the system of governance. Russia indeed has a diversified economic structure. <coughs> its GDP is comprised not only of oil and gas or even extraction industries. It employs less than 1% of its population in oil and gas industries. So it has become a relatively complex and importantly financialized economy since 2002. It's a service-driven economy. It's an economy with a high retail and wholesale trade sector, with other industries that are producing or supplying services to the domestic market. But because of the particular structure of uh, political elites and subsidies and overall lack of incentives towards structural reorganization of economic priorities. Unfortunately, a lot of state centralized income is dependent on the level of oil price. And those incomes are now have now become quite fragile with a reduced with a sharply reduced oil price and devalued ruble. The prospect um, it's difficult to forecast, of course, but there are signs that the crisis, although it might have peaked, it is not over, and there, are, there will be more personal, corporate and bank failures in Russia this year, or maybe in early 2017. So the crisis is quite likely to be dragging on as a protracted recession which is quite difficult for people to manage because the expectations in such a market tends to be negative. You don't know how to deal with uncertainty in the future, you don't know how to value it, and you don't know how to take risks, and in fact whether to take risks. So the short to medium term scenario economically is for the crisis unfortunately to continue, and possibly for the ruble to become even weaker than it is now. At the same time, the continuing economic crisis might generate a smarter political gesture or political reorganization with some initiatives to reform, to privatize, and to in fact add economic stimulus from the private sector to the Russian economy. So although I do not foresee a major political reorganization triggered by this crisis, there can be slow incremental moves 
towards a more liberal consensus and modernization. Thank you.